It is the Riot Podcast brought to you by Casper Mattresses. No, it's not. It's not? It's not. They brought, I thought they brought uh, brought us every podcast. They did not. Is that normally the podcast? I don't listen you to too many what? other podcasts. Um, but now it's less that. And is it the purple one? or? <laughs> I'm trying to think. What are the ads? I guess I haven't he- heard the ads repeatedly enough. They very- Now there's so many podcasts. The ads have become slightly more varied than uh, they used they to be a year or two more. ago when it was always me undies yeah. and uh, Casper mattresses. Well, thankfully not here. Nope, we're not mattress brought to you. free since the start. Yep, we're not brought to you by anything <laughs> except you. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> we always ask in the podcast. We want to hear your ratings, reviews, uh, and then we want you to unsubscribe and. Uh, resubscribe. That's Don't just stay unsubscribed. I know that's important to say, but then that way that helps share our podcast with a lot more people who yep. maybe never seen the Worst of Riot podcast. Um, mm-hmm. So you can make a review as well and give us hopefully all five stars. We just hit, I thought it might be more than this. We just hit 50 reviews. All right. And uh, we have 4.9 Perfect. stars. Perfect. Who's dragging us down? Out of 10. Who's dragging the one down? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, yeah. Actually, I scrolled back. These were before I took over, but there's a couple that are like one or two stars, but the comments are really nice. I think so, people, not everybody gets which way the stars go. Yeah. And that, it ruins it because you can't like go in and edit the stars for them. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I back in the day, I don't think people quite c- <laughs> grasped well, what you were supposed to do. Uh, 4.9 stars out of five is we'll still pretty it. good. We'll take we it. We'll take it. We just heard from Brandon HTX. Hey, Brandon. He said, I discovered Radio U and the Riot while living in Maine, continued listening through college in Pittsburgh, and now listen to the podcast from Hugh. Houston. Yay. Hudson and Nikki continue the legacy of worse stuff, like <laughs> my travels only going down. Aww, thanks for the very kind review. Yeah. And don't forget for everybody else, if you have a moment to leave a review too. Yes, we w- might read it on the show. We probably will read it on the show Happy unless to. there's some reason that we can't. So in the podcast today, the number one thing will be about the robots. And you mean robots. No, you'll, you'll <laughs> hear some... I don't know. I'm still not over it with you. (laughs) But I want you guys to just know that something's coming. Mm -hmm. And when you get to it, you'll know it. And we'll all be upset at Hudson all the same time. Well, you can jump in and leave your comments and opinions when you hear it. And you'll know it when you hear it. I almost feel like nothing else matters in this podcast. Just that part. It is the very end of the podcast. You have to listen all the way through. Don't fast forward. You need to listen to the rest of the stuff. Like talking about... Uh, the cancellation of Arthur. Mm-hmm. Uh, we talk about the lowest score ever in Jeopardy. Yep. And LeVar Burton and the role he played in that. And uh, there's quite a bit of talk about Simone Biles and other Olympic stuff going on. And we also, uh, we had um, Isaiah, the new producer, the new news guy in he for that. He in for a bit. And he also talked to us about the Cleveland Guardians name change. Uh, which was not as simple as it seemed, mm-hmm. it appears. So there's more drama with it. Yep, there is. They just, I mean, you think they're leaving the drama behind by <laughs> dropping the Indians moniker, but no there's way. a whole nother <laughs> list of issues that they're now dealing with. <laughs> this one's something. Well, yeah. thank you guys for listening. As always, please uh, support us by subscribing and make sure you text and call 877 to Radio U and leave us a message there. Or if you want to join us at Radio U Riot on Facebook. Yep. Have a great day. Thanks, guys. If you missed out on the next Riot moment when it originally aired, you don't know how lucky you are. You're listening to the Worst of the Riot podcast. Nikki, it's time to break out the old uh, food document that we have. Oh, there's new items? There's new something for us. We have a Google Doc that we can um, use to keep track of things. Yeah, we we finally started scheduling the... (laughs) or at least We have a a grocery list that we can look for when we go to the store or now, again, give to Isaiah, the new producer, so he can go to the grocery store for us. And what we're adding is the new Lay's... Chip flavored chips. Is that the Dorito one? Uh huh. And there's like a pickle one. There's Doritos, Cool Ranch variety. Then there's the it's wavy, funyun flavored. Oh, I, I, well, wavy chip is the most important for me. Okay, but I don't know if funyun's going to be fun. Oh, funyuns are are that they put the fun in funyun. No, they don't. I yes, think they, they take do. it out. I think they no. take it out. No, they're used. They're abusing it. <laughs> I, I think love, it's I, wrong. Funyuns, I didn't appreciate until later in life. But oh, man, it's an acquired are they, taste. Uh, are they ever? 
They're, they're one of the chips you just get the cravings for. Oh, okay. No, yeah. I, I haven't hit that age in life yet. But I don't, yeah, I guess, I guess not. But I, <laughs> I don't know if the Lay's chips will really capture that. So we'll see. And then finally, uh, Cheetos chips. That one looks good. Yeah. But I, I wonder. I mean, Lay's, obviously, they're owned by the same company, Frito-Lay, that yeah. does all of these other things. So that's how they can do this. These are actually branded this way. And so they already have access to the seasonings. Is it really just literally going to be the same seasonings just on a potato chip? Yeah, probably they put in a tumbler or something and they just throw <laughs> it at it. <laughs> and they're like, here you go. Here's a new special flavor. I wonder, I, I just... If that's if it's that simple, I don't know if it'll translate. You know I, what I mean? I like, bet it does. A little splash of water on it, it'll stick right on there. <laughs> yeah. You got a new flavor. Like you're making a microwave pretzel or yes, something. <laughs> pretty much. The salt's going to stay right on yeah. there. <laughs> I, I, I'm definitely intrigued. We definitely have to have them for the show. But, I mean, it aren't... Isn't the seasoning of Cool Ranch Doritos just meant for a Dorito chip and not a potato chip is all I'm wondering. Guess we'll have to find out if it if it goes well. We also need to add on there the ice cream, the Cocoa yes. Puffs ice cream and the, is it Fruity Pebbles? Yeah. And then I saw... We should just do that all in one morning. Oh, I, should, I know we should. We should do an ice cream <laughs> morning. I saw someone else post about a cake pop cereal from Kroger's, which, okay. is, which is Ralph's for other places. Yeah. So it was cake pop in them. And I really want to try that too. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Add it what? to the list. Yeah. We're never going to get to all this stuff. <laughs> oh, we will. Why don't we have an ice cream morning uh-huh. and then a chip morning Ooh. another day? Now, this is something we could pre-promote ahead of time. Yeah. And I mean this. A food fight week where every single morning we come in and do a food fight. It's like spirit week, it, but for the riot. So it's a new flavor every day. Yeah. If okay. we can build up a, a stable of foods. We could do that. Oh, I think we could totally do it. You already All right, put that you, down for next wait, week. Did you actually get the Mountain Dew Cake Smash or did we forget about it? No, it's still on the thing, but I haven't gotten it oh, anywhere. Yeah. See, you get that. You I've get the a, chips. I have to order that from eBay. Cereal, and that's already three. Uh, then the cereal uh, ice cream, and that's four things already. There's a new Kit Kat That's flavor too. Like we're almost at a That's whole week. It. That's a whole week. It has to happen. <laughs> it has to happen. It's- this is the only, this is the most motivation we've had all, <laughs> all show week. Worst of the Riot podcast. So I don't know if you saw yesterday, Nikki, the new Ghostbusters trailer. So is this the, this isn't the one that had been out. Cause I thought I had seen one with the little, um, the little guys with Paul Rudd at the uh, grocery store. Yep, yeah, this is, is the new one. It's the same movie, but yeah, the brand they dropped a brand new trailer, and it doesn't seem. Uh, I don't know what the full response is, but there's a lot of people saying, "I thought the Ghostbusters were supposed to be funny." Oh, is it more yeah, serious? Yeah, it's a very. Uh, a very Stranger Things esque trailer. Yeah, I remember seeing and, that look. You know, Stranger Things could, had some funny moments, right? But when they were making this, because it's this has been pushed back from the yeah, pandemic stuff. When course. they were making that, that was still back when Stranger Things. I mean, obviously, Stranger Things will still do well, uh-huh. but that was sort of the look. A lot of things were moving towards. Yep. Uh, to have something be dated, but not too dated. Yeah, and so, I mean, I get having the kind of like, you know, the, just the 80s style, because that's when Ghostbusters came out as well, yeah. of just having like the young kids that are searching around town and they stumble upon something and who knows what it unleashes and then there's a mystery to solve. Like, you can do all that, similar to Stranger Things, uh, and pick up on that vibe, but what was so much a part of the first Ghostbusters and all of the <laughs> like following, even the one from 2016 with with the lady version, is that <laughs> don't call it that. Well, I mean, call, it is, but don't call it no, that. No, you don't like that version. Well, you don't I, like that term. I don't think anybody liked anything about it. <laughs> well, I guess yeah, that probably is just best to forget about it. But the Ghostbusters is comedy. Yeah. I mean, it really was the one from the 80s is really it's well done and it is actually surprisingly scary for a comedy if you go back and watch it but it was definitely a comedy and this one you you would expect at least a joke maybe well, now in the trailer. you're just watching the trailer so yeah. maybe maybe all they wanted to save all the humor for the actual movie That's itself what i was wondering i i was trying to give it the benefit of the doubt I was thinking maybe it's... Uh, and Paul Rudd kind of can do a straight sort of form of comedy. Right. So maybe we just didn't catch any yeah, of it. We didn't pick up on the jokes. Oh, it was so high, <laughs> highfalutin comedy, but we, we didn't, didn't even, even understand. 
<laughs> well, then I guess that would make it that we're that it's just not actually comedy to the to the common man. You're not supposed to question it. But you're it's supposed to sell us, and I don't think it's selling people. I mean, I'm still interested in the movie. I do want to see it, but if it's if it's what is depicted in the trailer, I feel that I'm going to be disappointed. Well, I guess just wait and find out for after. Is it after? Oh, that's no fun to do. Wait and find <laughs> out. We need to have an opinion now. You don't have. To. The you show don't have is to today. Worry. The you don't Ghostbusters. Have to worry. We have so, to. We have to come up with something to say about it now. Listen, we don't have to judge the movie completely based on the trailer that just came out. We yeah. can totally just wait it out and see if maybe the humor version will come out. It's. Yeah. Uh, did they say when it's actually going to come that's out? That's what or? I was trying to look up because on uh, apparently November 11th. Oh, that's soon. That's good that that's they're getting bad. it in in time for Halloween. I thought this was because it's be, a scary movie. Thought it was apparently be next year. Because <laughs> it's not. You can't put a funny movie in November. <laughs> uh, I mean, you can put a funny movie anytime. It's just, there's, it's obviously supposed to be like a fantasy, sci fi, horror type thing that's a good for, you know, not the necessarily fall. the whole family, but at least <laughs> it's very accessible. Sure. And so you would think that would be out before Halloween. <laughs> no. There's a lot of questions, a lot of, a lot of issues be. I'm suddenly seeing with this. Is the worst of the riot podcast. Simone Biles is she withdrew from the Olympics? Like I want to get the whole story on that. So so pretty much she withdrew yesterday from the team competition. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then she's not competing. Actually, what she won gold in last year uh, for the all around competition for the individual tomorrow. But mm-hmm. she still may come back and participate in some individual stuff. But just not for tomorrow or until she gives us other information. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. I guess so, I was so confused yesterday because I was like, oh, so it's the team. But then I'm still not sure. I guess it's still up in the air on like her on her own. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's the question that everybody has, I guess. And and man, there's just such a debate uh, that was oh, going on yesterday, stuff. too, because yeah. she says like. When she withdrew, I guess it was, it was not like she got hurt or anything. She had a really bad vault, whatever a vault is. You do, you do <laughs> don't you? What? The running. And That's then where you, you run and jump? The you big bounce jump. on the thing uh-huh. and then you hop over the vault. Yeah. Okay. And then you do like a twist. So she did a bad one? Yeah, it wasn't, wasn't her best. And, and they said like the commentators were kind of shocked and stuff. Yeah. And, and then she you wouldn't had expect a, that from her. She had a huddle, like went to go talk to everybody and then that was it. Yeah. And then that was... According to her, like it wasn't like she got injured or anything, but it was a mental issue that she's having, and that's why she's withdrawing. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so, some people are speculating. Other gymnasts online are saying she's suffering from the twisties, What's that? which is a slang term for when the internal human gyroscope goes haywire, making gymnasts lose their bearings while flying through the air. Hmm. Uh- so what a bad time for that. Yeah. So. so And then everybody going into the Olympics put her as like the darling of the Olympics. Yeah, she and really like the was. main thing. So the stress She's the and only, mental health uh, with that. the only Olympian that I can think of that is in all of the like, <laughs> you know, commercials and stuff. Oh, sure. yep. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, you yeah. know, I don't know any swimmers that are in commercials now. It's just, it's Simone Biles. So she was the big star. She was the big star. And push. now all of a sudden she's, uh, she's withdrawing from at least the team portion. But I guess they still earned a silver medal without her. They did. Which is, I guess, good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, silver medals are good. I just mean, like, <laughs> without her, that's pretty, that's good compared to what you were expecting. I think everybody was expecting gold for them. And mm. I, I think that's that was definitely hard on the team to just suddenly have that change up during it. So yeah. I, I bet silver was a, a welcome. <laughs> well, just in case, it could have been worse. You have to think, too, like, each gold medal is, like, a lot of money for these athletes. Sure. So for yeah. her to, like, go out, that's, like, a pretty big deal because, I mean, she's expected to win gold and Pretty much everything she yeah. participates in. Right, right. Yeah, there's the pressure right there. Yep. Do you do you think that it's almost a bigger story and higher profile that she withdrew from the team than if they had just won gold like they were expected to? You know what I mean? Not that not as if she's withdrawing to raise her brand or sure. anything. I mean, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it's a bigger story that because they were just expected to win gold anyways. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think there's there will be more throughout the day yeah, <laughs> on, yeah. on what that will all look <laughs> that's, like. But I, That's, again, what I was seeing on Twitter. It's just people debating, like, well, what is the – what is it? mean like what if a male athlete said he had mental issues and decided oh, to yeah. skip out and it's just like you know what I don't know what's worse being the uh 
being me, the too cool to care about gymnastics guy, <laughs> or being or- the debating gymnastics <laughs> mental health guy, I don't think I want to be either. Yeah, and yet I am the too cool for gymnastics because well, I just don't know anything it, about it. It must also be hard for her because she has she's focusing, she said, on her mental health. But now you have this whole other wave yeah. of people coming at you that uh, you had that pressure before, but now you have this whole different pressure. You almost missed hearing this one. We just couldn't let that happen. The worst of the riot. Radio U. Walmart has committed to uh, a new program where they are offering to pay 100% of college tuition for employees of Walmart and Sam's Club. Yeah. But not. That seems nice. Like, yeah, too nice. It's not as, uh, like, that's the headline, but it's not as all encompassing as that makes it seem. You have to choose. Uh, Is between it Walmart a few, University? Uh, <laughs> actually, you know, I'm pretty sure that's a thing, actually. Is it Sam's Club uh, Technical College? <laughs> because I know you you learn from life Yeah, if you're just working to. That's the school of hard knocks that's right, right there. That's the school right there. We've uh, all been to that. <laughs> it, you have to go to a, a list of certain approved schools, which is fairly short. Oh, I bet they um, give them a deal then. Actually, let's see. I know the University of Arizona is on the list. They also have University of Denver. I think Purdue is on the list. And then there's a few, uh, like it's, I think it's eight universities or online uh, options. So uh, a couple online different versions as well. But still, uh, if you can, go, if you want to go to college in nice. any way and Walmart's going to offer to support you through that, that's actually really helpful. They're just like, having really helpful. really helpful. I know they're just like everybody else. They're having a lot of problems getting people into work and staying there. Yeah. So they want to give some incentives. There's 10 academic partners for Walmart and Sam's Club. And so those are the universities that are allowed to, you know, you could use. If you participate in the program, you must continue part time or full time. So you have to stay as an employee to be able to stay having the free tuition. Yeah. So this is I actually... Um, like, okay, Walmart doesn't seem to be, at least when you go in as a customer, doesn't seem to be having quite the issues with staffing as some other, like more restaurants seem to have right now. Maybe they hide it better. Yeah. I'm sure that they have their own issues as well. But, uh, with the current state of things where a lot of people are just really reluctant, uh, I don't even know if I want to say that, but like, it's just hard to find workers right now. Uh, so this is a way of Walmart incentivizing people to uh, not only get back to work, but it's it's something that, like, let's be honest, you probably don't want to work at Walmart the rest of your life if, if you do you, start working there. If you're working while you go to school, sure. Yeah, that's definitely <laughs> an option for you. And I know people that have, have wound up working at Walmart. Some of them didn't have such great experiences, but you work your way up through Walmart and uh, eventually they wind up treating you pretty well. And in the meantime, like this, you can, if you can stick it out for long enough to where, uh, to where it pays off with that college tuition, then you're done. That's, uh, that's, you're getting paid and you're getting, uh, something to go forward with. Don't say we didn't warn you. This is the worst of the riot. Simone Biles. Uh, like he, he put it in the news and everything. Simone Biles withdrew from the Olympics, at least from the team competition and the individual competition. But, uh, again, like I'm admitting a lot of, uh, ignorance with this. I don't know anything about gymnastics. I don't know if she's completely like just going home or if there's other stuff she still could do. She's just saying she's going to take it day by day, Uh but it seems like she's also out of the individual stuff. Yeah. Who knows? So I don't know what's left. Is there a relay or something or (laughs) Not, that's not gymnastic. I don't know. <laughs> At least I don't think it is. Maybe but, I'm the one who doesn't what, know. Yeah. <laughs> what, what I'm realizing is, uh, like, as I've been looking, because I'll admit, I had the kind of knee-jerk reaction uh, a lot of people I've seen have on Twitter and stuff, where it's like, Simone Biles withdraws because of mental health. And it's like, mental health? Come on. You know what I mean? Everybody's upset. Like, what? What is she not tough? Can you imagine if somebody else did this? And uh, the more I've looked into it, it's like, I, I, again, and I said this before, I feel that mental health can sometimes just be a keyword that we use to get out of blame for some stuff or to get out of responsibility. But that doesn't mean that 100% of the time or just because somebody brings up that term, that doesn't mean they're wrong. It doesn't mean 
that because she says it's because of her mental well-being mm-hmm. that it's just like, well, she must not be tough. Well, well, if I, she was a real gymnast, she would be tough. Well, you got a lot of people saying that on one side yeah. and the other side saying, well, no, how could you yeah. even question it? And I feel with athletes and stuff or if there's a part of your life that there's a lot of pressure about, mm-hmm. that's where we might not understand the mental health side yeah. of it because we're not athletes. Right. We're not in that. Whereas we we might have more pressure and you might not understand a section we can have issues with. Uh, so I, I think it's very much there for athletes, probably more than we ever would even understand. Yeah. And at the end of the day, um, like one of the things I'm seeing a lot of people talk about is that she's competed previously with broken toes and both feet and with a kidney stone. And so, which again, this is all stuff. If we follow gymnastics, we would know, <laughs> I'll say, but, or maybe I would anyways, but I didn't know any of that. So, but you know, the knee jerk reaction is that you judge somebody. And, uh, the truth is we don't know it. It's very likely that Simone Biles, she's been through so much and it's this mental health it. might not be the perfect term for it, but we don't know what she's dealing with to where she has to withdraw. So I think a lot of us could learn a lot from taking a second and not ha- judging somebody and not, uh, y- you know, trying, we don't try to put ourselves in their shoes very often. And that's a tough thing. And the flip side of that coin is you may be going through a lot of stuff and because the world is the way it is and so many of us are just so quick to judge, you feel like nobody's really getting you, you know, where you're going through a lot and you feel like, well, I can't even say anything because everybody's just going to jump on me and say, I'm not tough enough for life or whatever. And the truth is, at the end of the day, even if nobody else gets you, God does. And what Jesus wants you to know is that he understands what you're dealing with. When nobody else does, Jesus gets it. And he is there to help you through it. He is there to give you, not necessarily so that you can just jump right back into the gym competition if you need to, but Jesus is ready to carry you through that situation, whatever that looks like. God gets what you're going through, even if the rest of the world is just going to judge you and, and not give you, you know, not give you a fair shake. Jesus is saying, I get it. I see what you're dealing with and I want to help you through this. I love you through it all. And God's ready to help with that. And if you need that comfort, there's no better place to turn. Say, hey, God, nobody else gets me. I'm going through a lot. I want some help with it. Please help me out of this. And he'll do it for you. The definition of insanity is putting the riot on again and again and expecting a better result. It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. First of all, the Indians, we talked earlier in the week, they're changing their names to the Guardians. And how did you feel about that? As a fan. I can tell by your body language. I don't think you like it. You can see it. I knew the name could change what's coming, which is fine. But the Guardians, that just, that wasn't my first pick for the new name. But overall, I mean, it is is what it is. Is it because of the statues on the bridge they say that they call the Guardians? Or was there some other reason? I I have no idea why they went with the name the Guardians. I Uh mean, they're saying that, but... I don't even know what a guard like. What is like? What is a guardian? You <laughs> know, I don't, like, I don't really get it. Unless you live gargoyles. across the street yeah. from the bridge, you don't know. You don't know. Yeah, nobody. <laughs> other people from Cleveland are like, what? I, yeah. don't, I mean, I don't know. But. but I think everybody's pretending they know. Yeah, right. so they're like, yeah, oh, yes, great of choice. Course. It makes sense. It makes sense. Uh, but I saw this story here, uh, actually, that you surfaced for me that the Cleveland Guardians aren't just a baseball team. They also are a roller derby team. Oh, they're already someone else's yeah. name? The Indians are stealing their name from a roller derby team. Uh-oh. What's up with that? I, you'd think that they would have went, like, outside of the city yeah. to find a new name uh-huh. because the Cleveland Guardians were have been a roller derby team, an amateur roller derby team in Cleveland for years, but they took everything from them. Well, Which, if you think they're going to get a new name... They should be like creative enough to go outside of you would Cleveland. Think. Yeah. Or is Guardians just such a good name no, I feel that uh, it was already taken because it was just it was so good it had somebody had to have it. It could just be the case if they didn't care. <laughs> yeah. Just like yep. take the name. So are the is the roller derby thing suing them or are they did they get money or they They said that they have they asked, but they have no comments on it yet. So usually when they have no comments from either side, mm-hmm. that means that they're 
in negotiations uh, right now. So I assume they're going to try to get some sort of money, which for this amateur roller derby team yeah. is probably awesome. Yeah, I don't think there's a lot of money normally in amateur roller derby. If, if I own the team, amateur. I'd yeah. be like, let's close down because I just got paid. <laughs> <laughs> there's no more roller derby team. I think they should have a partnership. Oh, yeah, that would They should get the fun. roller derby team out on the field mm-hmm. in between innings. Mm-hmm. That's an awesome <laughs> they can, idea. They can skate around the whole exterior of the stadium. Instead so, of instead of doing like the ketchup and mustard race yeah, for the matchups, they can do the roller derby race. race. <laughs> okay, wait, does every baseball team does the ketchup mustard race? Or? Uh, in this day so. and age, they almost all they seem always to. Do. Yeah. Oh, that's cute. So they said that um, basically lawyers are saying that, yeah, there, there's probably something that the roller derby team will end up getting that's reasonable. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if not, it, it doesn't look good for the Cleveland Guardians, <laughs> which is now, already something else. This is going to be so confusing for me. I just... Now, okay, just I used to the just follow the Cleveland Guardians base uh, roller derby team, and now <laughs> how am I going to differentiate between the two? It's really going to throw me for a loop. I'm sure they'll figure it all out, and and they'll be taken care of. I just <laughs> and as a Cleveland sports fan, you thought that uh, you would only get one name change this year, and now you have to get two two new things to update. It's a lot to follow. <laughs> it's it too is. much for us. Yeah, and so, now Isaiah too. Yeah. I know. I don't know how I'm going to be able to get over it, but it's probably good for the Cleveland Guardians. I mean, hardly Which anyone, the, the roller derby team, <laughs> hardly anyone even probably knew about them. Yeah. So now they probably like their PRs went up so much. In, Cle- <laughs> in Cleveland, they were like, wait, we have a roller derby team? Exactly. Oh, no, they got a bunch bad. of new fans. Yeah. <laughs> There's no fresh by date because it was spoiled when they made it. Worst of the riot. Radio U. <laughs> It was uh, less, uh, earlier this week, LeVar Burton, uh, his first night hosting Jeopardy. This is his week to guest. Yeah. And if and you don't he, know. He is the one that they seriously want him not saying Jeopardy, but like yeah. fans of Jeopardy. Fans, and he is kind of been vocal that he would like to do it. He really full-time. thinks he would be a good permanent host for Jeopardy. And of course, if you don't know, like maybe you know the name LeVar Burton, but you may not know who it is. He was the host of Reading Rainbow, the mm. the the show on PBS a long time ago, and he was also Jordy in Star Trek: The Next Generation, which is the guy that the has glasses. like the headband thing well, over his t- eyes. Every time for the last few months, he's been really campaigning. He's yeah. always like, "I've won all these awards," and he keeps pushing all these shows that he's done. Yep. And I keep looking at it like, I don't know what any of that is. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't, I'm not as familiar with your work. Yeah, I just yeah, I know Reading Rainbow and Star Trek: The Next Generation. Like and you know I remember the names. I remember going to this is weird. I went and the story isn't actually really even about him at all, but remember, But we're gonna make it. Yeah, we're eventually <laughs> we'll tie it into Jeopardy. But the other thing I remember about LeVar Burton is I went to a like, what do you call it? Planetarium or whatever. Yeah. In Canada when I was a kid and he was and it was like a movie kind of thing that displayed on the top of the planetarium and he was the voice and like because he, he was playing <laughs> Jordy but he actually did the story for the for the planetarium That's cool yeah I guess it's weird that I still remember that but I really think the only reason I do is because it was him well he was hosting for the whole week for Jeopardy but unfortunately the other day the Jeopardy competition wasn't so good. And yeah. so now it's not being talked about about him being the host, but right. instead what else happens? Yeah, because uh, we have the lowest score in Jeopardy history. <laughs> <laughs> and Patrick I really, Peace. <laughs> I don't understand how, it, I mean, I get it. You just answer, you answered a bunch of questions and you got them wrong. Yeah. But I don't know how you could get, answer enough questions wrong to get to negative $7,400. Good job on the numbers. Yep, there the we go. The previous record low score was negative 6,800, uh-huh. which was Stephanie Hole from an episode in March of 2015. Uh, but Patrick decided to do better than that. Yep. And he's from California. Yeah, and so he now holds the record after double jeopardy um, of seventy four hundred dollars under, yeah. <laughs> not above. He has to pay jeopardy. <laughs> oh, that'd be awesome! He, he, that'd he be owes. So cool. He owes Lavar Burton money, <laughs> money because, because he answered so many it. wrong. <laughs> so, hey, actually, that should be the rules of jeopardy. Oh, no one would want to play yeah. just in case. But normally they don't. They don't do this bad. Yeah. Uh, but but again, LeVar Burton really wanted to go in this week strong, they said, because he wants to take over yeah. and have no longer guest hosting, but just be the host of Jeopardy. But people are only talking about Patrick Peace. Yeah. Well, LeVar Burton also said this was this show was his first show 
and uh, he didn't think it went so well. And he talked to his wife and she was like, yeah, it wasn't so good. <laughs> oh, no. He said, well, he said she's the one I know can be honest. So she was and honest she with him was. and just said it wasn't it, you weren't being you. And so he <laughs> said he was going to be more of himself. We would say rate and review the podcast. But uh, let's be honest, that would probably hurt more than hell. The worst of the Riot podcast. For some reason, this is like the top story. Oh, uh, from yesterday. Ashton Kutcher. <laughs> Not Olympic and, stuff, but this. No. <laughs> and Mila Kunis. Everything else is Olympics. And then Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis say they don't believe in bathing their kids or themselves too much. So I didn't watch it. Oh, but you can tell from uh, Ashton Kutcher. From him? Well, I <laughs> was wondering. He doesn't seem like he bathes that much. If it was more like they were trying to be funny. Um, so, of course, no one, none of us are just going to actually watch the interview to uh-huh. see. But they were saying how they talk talked about how like um I don't know they just they were doing an appearance on a podcast and they talked about bathing and they said <laughs> that they just only wash what needs to be washed but outside of that uh they they just let the dirt grow <laughs> for wow. the most part uh but they don't uh, now that they're older Kutcher says that they have a system and if if you see dirt on someone then you wash it if not you don't I guess Maybe that's an okay way to do it. I don't know. I I like showering, so that's uh, that's my that, like. How else do you get up in the morning and wake up? Oh, I need you really? a shower. Yeah, I uh, I don't shower before the show. Oh, I don't, don't know if you can tell. <laughs> You're I, fine. I, <laughs> but uh, we call. sit across the desk. There's plenty of space. I'll be like, listen, could you uh, stop doing the Ashton? <laughs> <laughs> that's what that means from now on. But I uh, but for me, like the shower. I, that's where I like, that's my peace time. You yeah. know, like, I will just go like with Kramer living in the shower in Seinfeld. I, that would be me. I would just live in there just because I love, you just feel the warm water. It's quiet. Nobody else is there bothering you. So is it's, this like they're, are they too good to do this? Well, or, uh, is there some sort of see. health benefit of, does it help? Like if you have certain germs on you that you become like then new germs don't bug you as much. It sounds like, I don't know if this is. If I'm reading this right, but they were on a podcast where they also happened to be on with a with someone. Oh, no, they're on a podcast. Somebody on the podcast said using soap every day rids the body of natural oils. Mm. How did that come up? And then you got to fill up podcast time. So I'm sure it just made its way there. And so they agreed. And actually, uh, me, Lacuna, she's from the Ukraine, I believe. She said she did not have hot water growing up, so she was used to not showering a whole lot anyways, which that'll do it. Not having hot water totally changes the experience. I will shower every day. Even if it's <laughs> even if it's cold? I don't care. I'll still have to have something. <laughs> I went through a phase where I tried to take colder showers because I thought part of it was like, you know, if people in other countries and like, guys in the military and stuff can shower with cold water. Like, I need to toughen up a little bit. Well, they say it's good for your skin. It is supposed to be better. But it just... It's so horrible. I can't do it. I, I, I just love the hot water too much. Well, There's you, some things like I cut back on the cream and sugar in my coffee. I can do that. I can't do the cold showers. Well, we all have our things, right? Yeah, I guess we do. <laughs> Feel free to text at 877 radio You Are you in Ashton? Are you a Hudson? <laughs> Are you a Nikki where it's oh, a nice on. warm shower still, every morning? I shower pretty much every day, just not before the show. I shower like the, the night evening. before. Yeah. yeah. But I guess I do have longer hair, but it's not that I long. I got longer to hair than you. I know. That's what I mean. So I, I can do that. I can shower the night before and it's not like I'm sleeping with wet hair if I shower early enough. That's why I feel like I shouldn't. I don't want to sleep with that. <laughs> yeah. I don't want no, to that No, that's problem. a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> so text and say hey at 877 radio U. You can also message us anytime at Radio U Riot on our Facebook page if you have a story you would like to share too. Yeah. So uh, I guess uh, I guess when, however much we're showering, it's more than Ashton and Mila. And I'm fine with it. Or Mila. Mila. I, I never know. <laughs> Find more Riot content online, riot.radiou.com. It's an end of an era, the Arthur era. <laughs> Arthur, the TV show? Well, we the DW thing. Yes. And uh, we were talking a bit about there's this podcast that was popular for like a, br- a brief moment. Yeah, it's where, still going. Is it? They're yeah. finding each episode is like trying to find the original voice actors. Yep. Uh, for Is it for DW? Yeah. Or for well, all the characters? I think that's how it started out. Kind of like the one with the, it's just like any other podcast, uh, like 
where the there's somebody from the show and they start interviewing a few other people from the show and then it kind of branches out and all of a sudden it's a uh, it took off a little bit to where now a lot of people are listening and a lot of people from Arthur over the years have been involved but now uh, and actually the podcast was part of breaking the news that Arthur has been canceled. And it's not because he said something racist or sexist I mean, or anything. It's, or, a, it's a kid's show. It's a TV show. The <laughs> show has PBS. been canceled, not <laughs> Arthur has been canceled by culture. I don't even think I knew. Like, I remember Arthur from being younger, but uh-huh. I didn't even know it was still going on. No, neither did I. So I guess it was still a show that was maybe promoted or... Did they just, because some animation shows, like, they're like, yeah, we did those 10 years ago, and we're still going through the episodes. That's exactly what it (laughs) sounds like with Arthur. According to, and this was on the Finding DW podcast, which, by the way, uh, we talk about it a few times now. If it's, like, full of cursing and, like, I don't know, (laughs) drugs and stuff. It's not our fault. It's not our fault. We're just talking about where the news is from. But We haven't actually heard not, the podcast. We're not promoting the podcast. We're just telling you where the news came from. <laughs> and uh, this was a former Arthur writer. Her name is Kathy Wog or something like that. I don't know. W-A-U-G-H. If you're a fan of Arthur, if you sure surely you know. know the name. And she said, Arthur is no longer in production. We had our rap party Two years ago. Oh, so that's when they finished? Yeah. So. Oh, my gosh. The TV stuff and movies, like, if you found out when some of the stuff that we we are looking forward to, uh-huh. when you find out, it was like, hey, five years ago we did this, yeah. or it's been shopped around for 20 years. Yep. Uh, the things that we think are current, they're not. Yeah. Well, it's also one thing when you're an adult and you, like, there's kind con- I guess just with kids stuff, they feel like they can get away with it more because the kids aren't following the news oh, and the production know. schedule of Arthur. So uh, if you're a kid, you don't know. But now all of us adults, the curtain has been lifted that they've made the Arthur episodes you're seeing now that are new <laughs> years ago. Lies. It first premiered October 7th, 1996, and it ran for a total of 25 seasons. Yep. And that feels uh, like The Simpsons. I think yeah. Simpsons is longer, but that feels like People that length. still talk about The Simpsons, uh, but Arthur arguably has had just as good of a run. It's been 25 years, but uh, PBS currently airing episodes from the show's final season, and it'll wrap up later this year. So a sad day for Arthur fans. I wish I didn't have to break this news to you. I don't uh, know if there's any around. I don't. But. <laughs> well, I just don't know if there's any that have been. <laughs> you probably feel some fondness if you watched it when you were a kid. Yeah, I watched it, but li- like you, and I watched it a lot, but I didn't know it was still going. The equivalent of someone's lint collection. This is the worst of the riot podcast. One of my new favorite people, Giannis Antetokounmpo. He just won the NBA finals. He scored 50 points in the championship, like the final game of the finals. Not to, to minimize seal the deal. that, uh-huh. but is he also the guy who ordered all the Chick Fil A nuggets? That's right. And he's that's the one, one of the reasons. It's the Sprite and lemonade. Uh, well, what's yeah, the I think that's that the one. I think that's the mix that he did. Yeah, so that that's what we know him best for. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> we talked about that last week. We've talked about him a few times. I didn't realize, like, obviously, I've heard of him. He's been an, a big star in the NBA for a few years. I didn't realize how much personality he had. Yeah, and I've been uh, following him on Twitter, and he's actually pretty interesting. But this, this is what puts him over the top. This is Giannis Antetokounmpo. He's like uh, NBA royalty now. He's making millions of dollars. And he's a really tall guy, too? Yep. Okay, Very tall. He's uh, from Greece originally. So I think that's part of the charm is like his English is like a little a little off to what we would uh, the way we would talk. So that just kind of adds to the fun. And then so last night, the United States men's basketball team at the Olympics was playing against Iran. Mm-hmm. And so Giannis tweets out, how can I watch uh, the? Oh, what time it is? Yeah, and where channel? can I find? Where can I find the game? <laughs> and people let him know the only way you can watch it legally is by subscribing <laughs> to Peacock. <laughs> and he goes, "If I gotta pay, never mind." Can I say that's that's something we can look up to right there? Even that's a somebody. Even people with uh, millions of dollars are like, Don't "I'm pay for out Peacock. on Peacock." <laughs> I am not going to pay to watch. And it might have something to do with the fact that the United States, like, yeah, you maybe maybe he wants to support the U.S. even though he's not from the United States. 
But uh, they were like 40-point favorites in their game last night, which is outrageous in basketball. And they did wind up winning by a ton. So, uh, you know, it wasn't exactly the gold medal match or anything. But still, the the stance that Giannis, who has millions and millions of dollars, is saying paying anything for Peacock is too much for me. I'm I'm on board with that. Well, I don't know if anybody else, they say that viewership for this Olympics is down so much mm-hmm. because uh, all the drama. Uh-huh. I mean, there's just drama everywhere you turn. Yep. Uh, but they're also saying because the, when it's in a different time zone yeah, and that makes it some tough. things are live, some things are not, like a lot of it's just shifted time-wise. Mm-hmm. They said that for this set of Olympics, people are so confused where to watch it yep. and what time to watch it yep. that they pull a Giannis and you don't care at the end. <laughs> You can actually find out when this yeah. thing's going to be. So well, I don't know if anybody's watched a lot of the Olympics, but if you haven't, don't feel bad. Like they, they their viewership is just down so much. Yeah. Well, at the end of the day, too, for the Olympics, uh, it's one thing if you like you. What we've talked about before is these the sports at the Olympics are not sports you would most of us would typically watch, but you just watch if you watch because it's the Olympics. Mm-hmm. But then when you find out that like, well, if I want to watch the Olympic swimming, I can, if you don't want to watch it on NBC when they've uh, in at like primetime, when it's not live anymore because of the time difference, if you want to watch it live, are you really going to pay, like, subscribe to Peacock just to watch swimming for a, a couple weeks or Some something? Some people you know, would just... in the past, but just not for this yeah. one. And I feel like every time there's been Olympic news overload, mm-hmm. but not about the results from yeah. things. It hasn't been so many puff pieces. <laughs> there's been a few stuck in there of like, look at the families cheering for their, uh, you know, swimmer or whatever. But uh, most of them are. Everybody has the virus. This person's canceled. And there's a canceled, tropical canceled. storm coming. <laughs> yeah. And. <laughs> Yeah, and Simone Biles is withdrawing. It's just all this kind of negative stuff. Don't say we didn't warn you. This is the worst of the riot. This is a new segment we're going to call Robot Talk. <laughs> Robot, wow, it's a robot. way to bring the A How creative. I know, how about I know ro- we have a new producer, but maybe uh-huh. Isaiah can give his input if how about, we're going to have um, anything else. <laughs> robot Roundup. Is that good? Uh, well, maybe. Let, why don't we just not commit to a segment? A segment, and yeah. We don't, it's too no much one, work. No one work on any production for that. We don't know if we'll ever <laughs> talk about robots again. Can I say it like that? Robots? No, it's robots. But I like ro- it. Well, it just depends on where you're from. Where do they say robot? <laughs> where is that at? That's more the segment right there. <laughs> Who says that? Is that a Canadian um, thing? You're tell you're lying. That's nowhere. I think that's like a, a foreign thing. If you are from like Europe and then you're uh-uh. learning English, you I've say never it, heard you that. say robots. robots. I just I know. Uh, <laughs> In Futurama, no, Doctor Zoidberg <laughs> would real. always say, "It's not real." That's he it. would always Honestly, say, "That's not European." Robots. That's the show. Yeah, but he had like a Hungarian dialect or something. Yeah, but it's not real life. In oh but how God, do we know it's not? I how can't. do we know it's not though? No one says robot. He might have been voiced by a real Hungarian actor, no. and that's really how the Hungarian. Actor says no, it. the the voice actor's never matching the person. <laughs> it never does. <laughs> they had to cast a real alien lobster <laughs> man to voice that. I I don't want to talk about the robot anymore because if now I'm just, just going to keep gonna, saying robot because you're just going to throw me off with that. But I'm more also just disappointed that you're trying to blame some other place for saying I'm robots crediting when it was Futurama. Crediting Futurama with my pronunciation of robots. <laughs> All right. Well, there is a Olympics basketball robot. Yeah, ro- robot <laughs> in it. Uh, it. <laughs> It got a lot of attention earlier in the Olympics because it was automatic, mm-hmm. uh, as a robot is. It was hitting shots from all over the court. So is this the one that you saw the video of him doing like half court basketball shot? Yeah. This robot was trying to make the uh, yeah. the basket. They brought it out at halftime, uh, maybe because they can't have fans come out and shoot for oh, sure. I don't know, but th- they don't even have fans at all. That was during the U.S. men USA men's loss when they played France over the weekend. Yep, and it could do free throws, threes, and half court shots. And apparently, it was making all of them. But I didn't see that. But what I did see is that last night at the at the halftime show. He took two shots, it, it, because it's a robot. It doesn't have, (laughs) it's just an it, 
and it's not a person, and it sh- <laughs> So we don't need to humanize it. It <laughs> shot two court shot- I think it's Hungarian. Half court shot. <laughs> the robot shot two. Stop half- it. <laughs> Stop it. Did he miss? And he missed both of them, and everybody oh, feels like... Uh, the robot was bad. He's washed up. Yep, his uh, career is over. That's so, all he could do. The, the Olympic basket. Now he has to redeem himself in the next halftime show, try to get back out there. But uh, he's never going to win a gold medal No, this they way. say some of my favorite quotes about it, ba- uh, basketball robot is a fraud. Yeah. Father time comes for us all. Yeah, that robot did not have a long, his prime just came and went That's just right. like that. You got to stay in the game. But on, on the robot news, there's also another hardly impressive robot mm-hmm. from- Stop it! The people are going to be like, what's Hudson's problem? They're going to think that's how you say it. It is how I say it. It is not. It's not. It can't be. Why not? I can't. I can't. You seriously say robot. <laughs> I know we've never probably said the word robot to each other, uh-huh. so we've never had this come up. But you that's, mean the word robot. That's not what you Please don't lie to I'm me. I'm not only going to say it that way, I'm going to correct you. <laughs> you can't. You can't say There's it. A- you can't. There's a robot. There's a robot. <laughs> no. A robot from Oregon State University. You can't, they, can you? They made it so that it could run a 5K. It took 53 minutes. <laughs> but you thought it was going to be faster. Yeah, I did. I, it was like, can you beat the robot's 5K time? <laughs> And I was like, oh no, how fast? I bet you I can't. And it was 53 minutes. You can. I can totally beat that. Oh, well, it looks it looked like an idea. If you didn't want to do a 5K, yeah. you could at least have the robot do that. But it wouldn't be impressive at all. I really like they they put a video together of the robot. I'll say it right this time because I just can't keep doing it. I just want to make sure you can. The robot. Oh, thank you. Running the 5K. And at first it just shows the robot. And you, the way its legs are moving, it looks like it's running pretty fast and they pan back and then out. they kind of pan over and you see people like just walking by it <laughs> in the regular speed <laughs> well it's a it was an option we thought for if you wanted to join our radio u 5k mm-hmm. uh, if you needed a robot to do your time for you yeah. but it'd probably be better you can walk or run and you I can make know. a better time if this is a you know if we're making a lot of progress with the robots or if they're just if this is a sad day where I really realized the limitations of them the and robots. you, you as well. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Worst of the Riot podcast. Oh no, I missed it. Do it again. You can hear us live every day on the Radio U Network through the Radio U app or at riot.radiou.com.